Last time we spoke it was about six weeks ago, and you said you expected a rough second quarter, down maybe 25 percent, some rebound in the third and fourth quarter, and then the economy really getting back to full steam sometime in 2021. A lot's happened in that six weeks. Has your view changed? Well, D David, our view hasn't changed, but it comes back to what I said before. This is a health care crisis. And as you're starting to see the health care crisis be mitigated, not solved yet, you're starting to see the economy uh, start to recover, and we can talk about that. But the approach to winning uh, the war against the crisis uh, for us has been a customer-centric, community-centric, employee-centric move. And so you know, we've been out there driving it. We've been supporting our clients and trying to make sure they have the credit and capital to uh, uh, to do what they need to do and, and help them through this trough of activity in the second quarter. And you can see that in the loan balance is extended to PPP loans and other things we've done. We've helped our consumer clients through waivers so they have the ability to have better cash flow in a house. We've helped our teammates by saying no layoffs so they know their job is secure and then getting them safe and working from home. And then we've helped our communities by contributions in, uh, of $100 million in CDFI. Uh, investments, which are community development financial institutions at $250 million, of which about $170 million is already out. So all that is offsetting the impacts of the current uh, second quarter downdraft that you've seen with the unemployment numbers. And we don't see it much differently. It's just that we're starting to see us come out the other side of this, frankly. So we have heard from the Federal Reserve, and they've expressed some concern, at least, that as this pandemic continues, there may be some threat to the overall system. And specifically, they talk, for example, about commercial real estate. Are you seeing some parts of the market that are particularly vulnerable on the credit side? Well, remember that the, the U.S. economy is going to be dependent on the activity of the consumer uh, base. And, and so you always have to start there when you talk about the U.S. So even though we have this year from the Bank of America research team, which is the best in the world, you know, being minus 5%, 5.5% this year and plus 5% next year. The real question will be how do consumers behave? And, and what we've seen since the low point in the second couple, first couple weeks of April in terms of everything, in terms of their spending because of uh, the stay-at-home edicts, in terms of their borrowing activity, uh, in terms of the uh, transfer of money, um, you saw all that fall to a lowest level. And obviously things like travel and hotels and things are most affected. But as you've seen steadily as you went through the third week of April and on into the first part of May, you're seeing their activities pick up even in the states that are still under stay from home. And you're seeing the activity pick up much quicker in the places they're going back to work. And so for the month of May, we're seeing it down about you know, 2 3 4% versus last year. Uh, for the year today, it's down a couple percent. And that's the question. The length of this is going to be how the consumers behave, given the, the high levels of unemployment that you've seen published. When people get back to work, jobs coming back in, the stimulus payments, which are all hitting the street of the last few weeks, and how it all works together to see if the consumer's behavior changed. And when, I hear, when you hear Governor, uh, Chair Powell and others, the concern I have is to have we changed consumer behavior as we look out across the next you know, four, five, six quarters. Well, that is a key question, maybe the key question, Brian, clearly. When it comes to the consumer, I know you've already taken about $4.8 billion reserve against credit, possible losses. Given the level of unemployment, which is really quite stunning, do you think that's going to be enough? Well, what you've seen so far is uh, with the consumer help, you know, we've, we've uh, uh, granted about a million and a half payment deferrals. But if you look at the actual uh, interesting statistics, about 35 or 40 percent of the people asked for a credit card payment deferral went ahead and made the payment. And if you go and look at those consumers, what you see is because of the uh, leave aside the, the, the issue of you know, where the money is coming from, you're seeing higher balance in our account. And that's because the stimulus between you know, the EIP payments, between the enhanced unemployment, the, these measures taken by Congress and by the administration, by the Fed, have worked to offset the unfortunate aspects of very high unemployment. And so, so far, you're not seeing the delinquencies and things rise. You've, asked, you've seen payment deferrals uh, increase, but you're seeing them start to level off and come down in our book. And so we, we expect to see you know, charge-offs coming later on as, as, as this thing goes on. But, you, but the reality is right now you're not see, seeing the kind of credit damage that you'd expect to see with this amount of downdraft and activity. The question is what happens next, and that's what we're all watching. And to that very point, you've said in the past China, to some extent, may give us some indication. We've seen numbers coming out of China, Brian, that indicate the industrial production has come back pretty quickly. Oil consumption is coming back as well. But on the other hand, consumer maybe not so much with the retail sales. Does that give you cause for concern back here in the United States? 
Well, it does because the the question is how did you change behavior? So. When you saw China, you saw, you know, they went into this earlier, they locked down earlier, they came out earlier, and, you know, we're back in our, you know, offices in China moving from 50% of people back to work to 80%. So you're starting to see a normalization of activity, and then the question is, what's the underlying activity in restaurants and, and shopping and things like that? And so you saw an immediate burst of activity as they open back up, and you saw, see it fall back down, and that's what we have to watch in the United States is there'll be a burst of activity in some of these places as people who have been – you know, in their homes for six, five, six, seven, eight weeks, go back out and do things, and then will that sustain? And that's where you need to look more fundamentally on things like car purchases and things like house purchases and see where they start to end up over time. But remember, the baseline projection for most people is the economy doesn't get back to its current size until you get to sort of the end of next year. That's the definition of recovery. So, But each quarter from this quarter forward is increased economic activity, and what we have to make sure and all the policies and stimulus have been put in place are making sure is that despite the very high unemployment, despite the issues of who's unemployed, despite the issues of getting that we need to get people back to work and the human toll of all that, the stimulus is offsetting it. It is an attempt to offset that, and you have to see that play out over time. Uh, Brian, you have something like 180,000, I think, people working from home right now. You talked about what you're doing over in Asia. When do you expect them to come back and how? And by the way, how many? Will they all come back? Well, the, the idea is we have, we've always had people who worked outside the standard office setting, and that's something we do. Um, there's a great debate, you know, will this change forever, the workforce in America and where they want to work? We'll see that play out, but that is, that is further out there. In the near term, we have, a, we have been open every day. We have not shut down, except for the branches we closed out of, of concerns to keep our teammates safe in those, in those branches, um, we, which is about uh, – 40% of the branches, everything else has been open. We've been functioning every day, and we're beginning to open those branches, especially in the states that are reopening slowly but surely. So we have the ability to operate very well, very much under control. Our tech and ops team under Kathy Besant's leadership did a fabulous job of putting us in position to have 180,000 people work from home so we can operate this way. So we have the luxury to go back slowly. And with social distancing requirements, with temperature taking, with all the policies that all employers want to put in place, you know, the, the ability to have the luxury of putting people back in place carefully also takes a burden off of the communities we operate in, not to have you know, a high level of cases or, or, or infections and having people move around and creating pressure on the community. So we'll, we'll go back slowly. We haven't set any plans yet. We have a top talent team working on right. the reentry back to the office. It's not right. back to work. We're working every day. It's back to the office. Yes, yeah, sure. No, I understand. Brian, finally, uh, we're going to hear from uh, uh, Federal Reserve Chair Jay Powell today as part of the CARES Act, a report on that. He's been doing a fair amount of talking already. What would you like to hear from Chair Powell today? Well, I think the, you're going to hear from both Secretary Mnuchin and Chair Powell, but and I think people have to step back. You know, there's a, a the PPP program is now, you know, still has money left. The applications are still coming in. The dollar volume of loans is, is going up, but the number of loans is going up faster, so the loans are smaller and smaller. In our case, we've done 320,000 of them as of this morning, 80,000 average balance. Uh, it's 98% of the employers are under 100, 80% are under uh, 10 employees. Uh, and so these are small businesses that are getting the help they need. And so I think what you want to hear is where's the next rounds of uh, their ideas to, to continue to put money into the economy to help, because it's not an unlimited resource. Um, so we need to keep adding it carefully. And the areas, I think, that need the most help in the near term are the states because of the incredible budget pressure they've been put under. And if we don't help them, we'll see them have to make budget adjustments, which will add the unemployment burden to the hospitals and things. It's a similar issue in terms of uh, having to shut down and lose revenue, and they need to get that whole plug so they can get back to it. And in some respects, some of the nonprofits and the performance nonprofits, especially the same issue, universities. So the, the idea is the stimulus has to continue to help Americans through the unemployment assist benefits uh, uh, and things like that. But also has to, it can be targeted in the next rounds towards these places that just have operating holes that we have to decide as a society we're going to replace so that they can get back and provide the great services they provide. And so that's what you like to hear. In terms of the work, and the, the, there's a lot of discussion about facilities and usage and other, up and operating. A lot of these facilities were put in place to stabilize, and you see massive stabilization in the market so that you know, high-grade issuance will have another record month probably this month. Uh, 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 you know, 
high yield will have a strong month. Uh, if you're starting to see converts and some equity deals get done. The stabilization and the fact those facilities aren't all used is actually good news. That means the markets are doing what they're doing and providing capital. So what I think people get focused on is how much money is outstanding on facility X or something. The reality is having it there provides a comfort that the private sector can drive it and the banking system can drive it. So whether it's Main Street, whether it's some of these other facilities, you know, the debate ought to be not about whether they're being used, about the good news. If they're not being used, that means you've seen stability in the funding structures. Yeah.